How are you? Yeah, I'm wearing sunglasses. We're going to talk about that. You good? I can see even less of you now. I don't know if that's good or bad. I, you got to give it up for the band. I was talking to a David to David a little bit backstage, and um, I'll tell you why I'm wearing the sunglasses because he and I are in the same spot. Um, I'm gonna read you something, and we're gonna pray, and we're gonna get started. Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, we are being transferred into his, transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is a spirit. So this week I've been, I've been looking at holiness. I kind of wear these sunglasses today as a symbol of the bright Shekinah glory of God. The light, it's a light that casts no shadow except on those that live in darkness, this light of 10,000 suns. It is said to illuminate from the originator, to illuminate from the faithful, and to have been before time itself began. You cannot behold him, you cannot look upon him. And he told Moses, Take your shoes off, for the ground you stand on is holy. Mm. Let's pray. Father, whew, I feel you. I feel you moving even now, and I thank you, Lord. I thank you that your spirit is here. I thank you that we, unlike the pagans, we don't have to sacrifice things and, and, and items and people that we just offer ourselves, and you say it is enough. I ask that you bless your people. I ask that you come down with an anointing. I ask that you speak through your word. And Father, I ask that you just use me as a humble device, a speaking, moving thing for you to use. And Father, I just ask you to take control of this situation, take control of this service. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will convict those that need convicted, lift those that need lifted, Drive out the darkness that, no, that this light of yours can only do. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for your presence here today. And all God's people said, amen. amen. And I will take these off because they are not prescription. Oh, my Lord, you take me away. You take me away to a happier day. From mountainside to valley so wide, your world is adorned like the waiting bride. And in waters blue I see you, reflected back in all that you do. From my heart a fountain spring overflows with the love that you bring. In days of old, stories were told of valiant men, both the brave and the bold. But the bravest man this world will ever see, he died on a cross for you and for me, risen now and glorified, and he's waiting there on the other side with a crown of gold for those who endure to lay at the feet of the Lamb so pure. Those were lyrics to a song I wrote a long time ago. Uh, uh, no, no, thank you, thank you, but no. That was God, and here's the thing, man, and we're talking about consecration, and I love this band's heart, and that's why I can't get past this right now. My band was called Trial by Fire because we were rough when we came out and all we wanted to do was worship the Lord with our music. So we called this band Trial by Fire because we had been there and done that. And that song was written and the length it took for my dude to play it through once and then me to write lyrics and play it through again. And that was it. And that's not because we're so amazing, that's because we had consecrated that band, we had offered it up as a sacrifice and said, Father, this is yours. Do with it as you would. I don't take credit for those lyrics because they're absolutely beautiful. God said, I got you. 
The Christian band should be that. It should flow because it's not of us. Now, they, now, Cananiah led the way. If you read the Old Testament, he went before the, the armies of God. He was a minstrel and he sang. It's good that we have worship and it's good that we have music because it opens the doors. So I admonish you guys, keep going. Keep offering yourselves to God like you have been for all this time. He will use you in ways that will blow your mind. So today we're gonna to talk about holiness. Um, and I'm telling you, man, it is not, it, it's, oh my, I wanna tell you a story real quick. Um, Michelangelo painting Sistine Chapel, rolls through the flat, rolled through the clouds, rolled through all the angelic host, pounded all that, got it all done quick, and then he got stuck. And he's like, I gotta do the faces of these guys. So he began to do the faces, and he got stuck again. Long story short, when it came to the, to the face of the Lord himself, he rushed it, moved on, and said, that's enough. No one can capture that beauty. So I will not do this, this message uh, justice because, quite frankly, my pea brain just doesn't get it. But I am going to read some scriptures to you, and I am going to admonish you to pay attention to the spirit, not of this vessel being up here talking, heading it. Um, just listen, because we are powerful in him. We are mighty in the Lord. In 1 Peter 1.16, uh, we read, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Now I know, holiness to some people is a pair of jeans with the knees blown out, right? Or, if you're a clown like Brian and I, it's uh, the, the early scenes in Ace Ventura when he is uh, gone to the monastery with the monks. <laughs> also, not holiness. Holiness is a word... Um, in the, in, the old, in the New Testament, the Old Testament is a little different, but the New Testament is where I'm going to hang today, really means to set apart. And just like the band, my old band, Trial by Fire, we lived the best we could after we made the covenant with God to fulfill that covenant. When we said, Father, take us and use us, we did everything we could to live up to our end of the bargain. We were available when he wanted us to go, even to some weird places. And at one point, <laughs> at one point, the band, uh, we, we gave some donuts to some holy, or to some homeless people and uh, got chastised for that because uh, with our long hair and everything, they said we were demons with donuts. <laughs> huh? Demons with donuts. The new shirt, Brian, mark that down. So we went where and did what with, and some, sometimes in a band, uh, particularly a four or five, sometimes in some venues, you'll, there'll be more people in the band and then the band's people <laughs> than there are in the audience. But that's not the point. Jesus leaves the 99 for the one. You all know that. But when we talk about setting apart, we set that band apart and we gave it to God and He's asking you today, whom shall I send? He's coming to you and he's asking you very specifically, will you go from me? Just like you did the prophet. I hope you would answer the way the prophet would. But the bottom line is, consecration is a, let's put it like this. When you're in the world, your desires, your wants, your needs oftentimes run even to the exotic where you're always trying to fill that big empty, right? You're always putting junk in, garbage in, garbage out, where you're always trying to fulfill a hole that only God can truly fill. And it doesn't, it, it's, a, it's a never ending. But 
once we are fully consecrated and we give up to him, he will fill your needs. When he says, I will give you the desires of your heart, he's, it's, not a, you're, you, you, it's not carte blanche to get, to get whatever you want. He says, I will give you the desires of your heart, meaning he's going to change your heart. Your desires change. Like Brian said a hundred times, if, you're des- if you still desire the same things on- just like you did before you stepped into the ring with the Lord Jesus, maybe it wasn't legit, maybe you didn't really mean it. Because you should be changed. We should be changed. You don't, and and I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm not talking where we all walk around in monk costumes and shave our heads and... and, and act like something. I'm talking when you literally really are something. That's why we can worship the Lord to hard rock and heavy metal because it's the soul, it's the heart of those that perform. It, ha- it doesn't have to be all right he did. That, that doesn't ma- make you holy because you can sing beautiful dulcet tones. A lot of people, that was all right, wasn't it? That was all right. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't get you there, man. Just because the, the kittens were, were born in the bread basket didn't make them muffins. Yeah, that's right. I'll quit with the cliches. <laughs> but all people have sinned, Romans 3.23 says, and are imperfect. The only option to be set apart is through the salvation of Jesus Christ. John 3.16, you know it. Romans 10.9, if you don't know it, look these up. Ephesians 2.8, I'm not going to read them all because I don't want to keep you here all day on Mom's Day. Happy good day to all you mothers out there, by the way. Skip that one. The only option is to be set apart uh, through salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, When we believe in Jesus as Lord, he cleanses us from our sins and, and it makes us holy uh, the theologians use this big word that uh, we don't use any other place ever. Uh, it's called uh, sanctification. First Peter 2.9 speaks, uh, speaks of this as well. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. Don't you get it? He earmarked you for this thing. And these cats know. I've got a lot of instruments. I've got a lot of, I played bass for, well, I don't know, since, since I could pick one up. I played bass more than anything else. And the bass I use more than anything else is an old P bass. It's got chips out of the back of it. I've worn the front off of it. The neck's been cracked. But I set that one apart over all the others for an act to offer up, to use That's what the Lord's wanting from each of you. He's wanting you. Paul said it this way. He said, I am today even being poured out as a drink offering. If I didn't want to make a mess here, or if I could make a mess here, to pour this thing out and offer it to God means it is gone. Who are you saving yourself for, man? You're not going to get out of this alive. Don't you get it? Give it up. What you have within you is uncompromised and pure. The Holy Spirit wants you to speak to others, wants you to show that you are different. The Bible says, come out from among them, be separate and touch not the unclean thing. It's time for the church of God to make up their freaking minds. Are you in or are you out? We can't be in the world and in God, not for long, or not effectively anyways. Brian and I have talked about this, talked about it with Erzy, man. You can still be a believer and be soiled. Don't you think those sheep out there in those fields get nasty, gross, things all dug into that big thick wool mud, they're dumber and dirt anyways. Always stumbling over something, always tripping, always drinking the wrong thing. You know sheep will drink anything? That's why the psalm says, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Sheep, we're dumb. So we have, to, we have to offer him us. And I know some of you are like, oh, Lord, this boy's tripping. I'm not. 
Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the earth. What he wants to give you is unsurpassed. And we, we're okay with that little satanic grace, as I call it, that he gives you, the devil will give you and make you think you're doing good because it's in your power. Faith is this far outside your fingers. I've said it before, if you're doing everything within your power, there's no faith in your life. We have to give it, we have to give it to him. In addition to being made holy, we are called to live holy lives, set apart lives. First Peter teaches, as he who called you is holy, also be holy in your conduct. Uh, the previous ad before that as, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, in verse 14. We are commanded to avoid the ways and practices uh, before becoming a Christian and live according to God's ways. We can only do this by the, by the living power of the Holy Spirit and the principles found in God's word. You know, and, and I hear people say that, man, I just wish that life came with some sort of, uh, like, directions. And here's the deal, man. If you ever put one of those, like, Ikea things together, you don't read all of it at once, or at least I don't, and usually I don't read it at all. But anyways, if you're going to try to do it right, you, you go to page one and see what it is. Make sure you got all the pieces and parts. The Bible's like that, man. You can't read all of it and get it all. As we learn, as we grow in the Holy Spirit, as we begin to offer ourselves up and set ourselves up, as we read, we change. Yes. And we are a little better today than we were yesterday. And you know what? You're going to be a, a little better six months from now than you were six months ago. You just got to stick with it, man. You got to not give up. Um, the theologians refer to the daily practice of living for God as becoming uh, more holy as a, uh, like I said, a pro progressive sanctification. Paul said, when Paul said be holy, or um, more to the point, he said be filled with the Holy Spirit, it's literally, um, in the original language, be ye being filled. It's a continual. So, it, rather than say be always filled with the Holy Spirit, he's saying be ye being filled. And as we seek uh, to follow God each day, we can increasingly become more and more holy like Christ. You know, the Bible says that let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Anybody ever tell you, you have a, don't raise your hands, don't embarrass nobody. Anybody ever tell you, you got a, oh, you got a dirty mind. Sometimes it's funny, but you know what I'm saying? Let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. I want you to think about this, man. And, and we were talking about this cat. You love him or hate him, the guy's good at what he does. Elon Musk. I get a kick out of the cat because I think he's phenomenal and funny. But to have the ability to do what that guy has done, you know, he just got a 40-some billion dollar um, bonus. That's a gift. Um, those types of things are so far beyond most of us, clearly, because nobody's drove in here in a Bentley, I don't think. But you get it that the holiness is so, to us, the theory of that progressive sanctification is so far beyond us because we've made it so complicated. Just like Elon Musk. Man, you can make a little money if you don't spend so much of it, Amen. Man, we spend every dime we get. We get, a, we get a raise. We get a $40 raise. We try to find something to spend that 40 bucks, man. That's just the way we are. But this is different, man. Sanctification is one of those big Christian-y words. And it, but it, the reality is that you just offer and then try to live according, accordingly, man. That, that's it. It's, there's not a big mystery there. I'm going to move on. You all right? You with me on this? I'm trying to... God had to dumb this down for me so it could make sense because I was so far. Yeah, well, you'll, you'll understand when I get to the scripture. Amen. Regardless of the process we make or progress we make to become more holy in this life, we will never be perfect. So the, again, Brian said it so many times, these guys that claim to be sinless, they, <laughs> that's a sin. We will still sin at times as Paul wrote in, in Romans 7, 18 and 19. 
For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. Anybody else feel that way like Paul? I really want to do good. I, I, I think I shared this last time uh, um, I, <laughs> I preached. Tyler and I do a song. It's, it's called, I want to do good, but not right. Or, I want to do right, but not right now. And I'm like that sometimes, man. Sometimes I know what to do, but I don't want to do it. Anybody else? Anybody with me? The Bible says for the man that knows to do right and doesn't do it to him, it is. Sin. Say it again. Sin. Bunch of sinners. <laughs> Amen. Saved by grace. For I have the desire to do what is right, but I do not have the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do is what I keep doing. It will only be in heaven that all sin will be removed and our lives will be made perfect. Again, this comes back to the, the perfective, they call it sanctification. And these words, man, when we talk about holiness, and again, back, back in the day, I hate to talk back in the day, but um, we get, uh, Brian Erzy and I get together and, and sharpen our knives and, and talk about stuff, and Brian normally feeds us a little bit, and we talk about the church and directions and whatnot. And we, we talk about, we talked about holiness, and we talked about moving into this, and, and this type of church, we offer freedom we are truly come as you are. It's kind of funny. This shirt says Warn Star, for those of you who can't fully read it, not Porn Star. If somebody made a, I a couple of people made a comment on the way in. Well, that'd be funny to have a porn star preaching. But you know what? If they're born again, we'd let them. That's the point. It doesn't matter what you did. It matter who's in you. So when, we, when we're talking about this, um, Erzy, Brian, and I, we're talking about being holy and, and what that means. And, and this church is a lot of freedom. And believe me, in the Lord Jesus, there is freedom. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You do know that it was um, Judas who was with Jesus the whole trip. You don't think he knew who that cat was? We don't pull up the tares with the wheat. And by the way, you know what a tear is? For those of you who don't know, I'm going to tell you anyways. A tear is a, a wheat, it, or a, it, it's a weed really, but it looks just like the wheat. But when you, crack, when you crack it, when you apply pressure, it cracks open and it's empty. So there are those among us in the church that are, some are, some are snakes in the grass, some are clearly malicious, Brian's... Uh, dealt with that for almost, you know, all this time. But there are those that have an appearance of godliness, but deny the power thereof. They, they're moving along, but that doesn't mean that they can't. That's in God's hands, guys. We're not to, we're not to dig these out like a splinter. That's not who we are. That's not what we're supposed to do. And I, and, and there's a, there was a, a pastor recently that came under some fire, and he's kind of a big guy, and if you like him, know who he is. I don't want to mention names, but I, I wonder if we couldn't have handled it better. Called out three witches in his church and made a big brouhaha. And the Bible says if you find your brother in sin, you go to them singularly. I'm not going to call, I'm not going to call you out from the pulpit. That's right. I don't know. Again, I'm not throwing stones. I just uh, the Bible has a, a way to do things. It and frankly, we don't know the wheat from the tear. The Bible says that clearly. And when you look out at a field of wheat, the tares look identical, man. It's the substance, and only God knows that. Sidebar. Go to Exodus if you're uh, doing your Bible. Exodus is fun. I think Erzy's excited. I get this, man. So, here's these Jewish cats, and they're put on, they're put under the thumb, the whole, I mean, Jerusalem, man, I mean, just raped and pillaged and 
All these people are now slaves to the Egyptians. Pharaoh's a big jerk. All these people are just mean. They, they beat them and kill them and they make them work tirelessly and endlessly. And, and old Moses heard about it from the wilderness and it bothered him so much. He said, you got to, what are you going to do? And another sidebar, God puts it, something on your heart like that, oftentimes he's going to use you, yes. by the way, and it may scare the hell out of you. That's okay. Do it anyways. Don't back down and don't stop. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. So anyways, you know the story comes through. And all, we've got plague after plague after plague uh, culminating in the death of the firstborn. And if you don't know the story, read the story. It, it's beautiful and it's tragic and it's awesome and it's sad and everything that can go on because it is not God's heart that any should perish. But he is a holy God and he is a God who makes every opportunity for these people to turn. And if they don't, it's terrible and it breaks God's heart, but it is what it is. So after all that, these uh, children of Israel, they're, and, and theologians uh, argue about this, numbers vary between a million, several, up to seven million, going through the wilderness. You know the story, 40 years in the wilderness, they get free, and they, by, the, oh, by the way, the reason it took 40 years is rebellion. Yep. Rebellion, obstinance. The Lord called them stiff-necked, yes. just hard-headed. Why'd you bring us out here to die in the wilderness with wasn't enough graves in Egypt? Yep. You can just hear it, can't you? Because yep. aren't we like that? Yep. We... <laughs> We just whine. At any rate, we're moving into, we're going to move into uh, chapter uh, uh, 19. But after all that, after all God did for these people over and over, and you talk about the word long-suffering, 40 years wasn't his design. That was because they were so hell-bent to not do what he wanted. So he gets them out. He gets them free. And keep in mind, this is God's chosen people. And this is, I want to point out, this is the God that if you are born again, that you have linked yourself to. The God that won't let go. The great hound of heaven. The, the pit bull that will not let you go. And I don't care how bad you think you are, or how screwed up, or how willingly you sin. As a Christian, if you confess your sins, and ask for forgiveness and repent, it's the prodigal son, man. You can't run so far, he won't find you. And even if I make my bed in hell, David said, it is there you will find me. Amen. So after all that, after all they've done, finally freed up, finally cleared up, we're over all the dumb stuff. We're going to start in verse 19. On the first day of the third month after the Israelites left Egypt, on the very day they came to the desert of Sinai. Then they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob. And this is what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did in Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. By the way, the Bible talks about that that is his bride, that we are joined with them now as his bride. Although the whole earth is mine, 
verse 6. You will be for my kingdom, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you, uh, you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back down and summoned the elders and the people and set before them all the words that the Lord had commanded him to speak. And the people all responded together, we will do everything the Lord has said, finally. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord and the Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses um, told the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord said to Moses, now think about this. I want, you, I want you to pay attention to this. And the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes, verse 11. And be ready by the third day because uh, on that day the Lord will come down on, sound, uh, on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people, but put limits for the people around the mountain and tell them, be careful that you do not approach the mountain or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches a mountain will be put to death. Now think about this, guys. Again, this is not God being a big meanie. This is about a holy God. This is about a God who is, has been forever, that the Holy Spirit now rests within us from Jesus on, but then it would rest on a man. But this was a guy who's, this is the Lord whose presence, the angels could not even look, the, the, the seraphim all day, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and evermore shall be. And the Bible says, and in, in his his train filled the temple. This is a majestic being. You don't come up there cracking your gum. What we got going on? This isn't that. This isn't that. This is kick those shoes off. This is stay back. You have no idea what's coming. The grandeur. The angels themselves have only seen. And by the way, he had to come to them in a cloud because that Shekinah glory, you couldn't look upon it. It was too much for mankind. 14. And after Moses had gone down to the people and consecrated them and washed their clothes, he said to them, prepare yourselves on the third day and abstain from sexual relations. 16, on the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning and a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Can you imagine? Can you get your head around that? This mountain, a mountain thunder and lightning and a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. I think that, in, that there would probably knock us to our, our knees. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it with fire. Do you know the Bible says that our God is a living flame? And we treat him like a big lighter. I got Jesus. When Jesus was rolling out, going up, he said, hey, I'll be back. But greater things will you do. You, right? Greater things will you do because than I did because I'm leaving you the Holy Spirit. And we'll split a church because of a t-shirt. Come on. The Holy Spirit will knit us together if you'll stop playing church. Consecrate your life unto him. Give him what is his already. He's born you anew. No man can take you from his hand. Nothing in this universe can snatch you from God. You ever play that game? Hold your hand out, your brothers get over there and try to grab stuff. Jesus made sure that God is the all-time king. 
Ain't nobody snatching nothing from that man's hand. So what is it, man? You're going to set yourself apart? Are you going to think about it? No, don't answer me, but think about it. Think about the difference you can make in your... We're misfits. We're freaks. We're different. This is the cool place where we can come and be who we are. Tattoos, no tattoos. Attitude, no attitude. Whatever God is working on you, he's put you in a group of people that I don't probably know. What if? Just what if your little spark, this little light of mine, was to catch flame? What if? What if we fanned that? (laughs) What if? What if God used you? He's calling you out today. He's saying, whom shall I send? You? You? Danny DeVito's got his hand up. You? Whom shall I send? And the prophet said, here am I, send me. Shaking in his boots. The people in your lives. What about the people you love? Hell is hot and not for us. Uh huh. Come on. I'm talking to somebody. Somebody's going to change their world. Somebody's going to change the group of people they know. Somebody's going to be like, I don't know what happened, but I'm telling you, this cat changed. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. You're not going to argue stupid theology anymore because the whole being that God has created you will change. Anybody? Do you want it? Come on. Do you want it? Or are you scared of it? If you're scared of it, that's cool. I get it. Because what if he's going to ask you to talk to that stinky guy? What about that weird chick? What about that douchebag that stole from you? What about the one that hurt you? Mm -hmm. Remember the old story of uh, Jonah? Oh, no, bro. I'm not going to go talk to them. God's like, really? <laughs> oh, one, one bit. This is, how I cho- this is who I chose you to talk to. Kicking, screaming, yep. drowning. Yep, yep. You remember what that brother looked like when he got spit out by that big old fish? Yep. And the smell. I don't even like fish. I imagine he had some wrinkles. And they said the, uh, the stomach acid probably made him white. (laughs) So here's this cat coming down to preach now, smelling like, woo, and looking like, uh. Don't let that happen. Don't be like Jonah. But he gave in, man, and (laughs) Nineveh changed. Nineveh changed. I'll quote, uh, a movie I quoted last time. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. Seize the day. For this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Monday, maybe later today, I defy you to be honest. I defy you to tell people that you don't have all the answers, but you know the answer that you're not all together now, and yeah, you're a lousy Christian in their eyes, but you know you're being changed. The Bible said, we read that scripture, we are being changed into the likeness. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. I felt, even last night, you're right, but you know what, Jesus still loves me, and there's room at that cross for me, and I know that there's room for you. We gotta be honest with people, man. We've gotta tell them, yeah, I am not The poster boy for Christianity, I promise. But I do know Christ. Dude, you can't deny something that cannot be denied. 
when they see a change. Becky and, and, and Sebastian and I had an opportunity. I've talked about him before. It's a cat named Mike, man. We called him Toad because he was in our bike group. Toad was a fiery um, Irish redhead dude. And every Sunday come in with something wrong with his face or whatever. And uh, he'd fight her, bro. He just, you know, short fuse, uh, no fuse. I mean, the guy would just fight. He, he didn't care. Knuckles all tore up all the time. God got a hold of him in that little church. God got a hold of him and, and changed him into a lamb. Not that he lost his personality, but God refined him. Y'all need refined. Amen. I need, I need refined. And here's what, re, here's what refining is, and we're, we're going to close for too long. Refining is a crucible, and you put bulk in this case, we're talking gold, let's talk gold. Well, you, you put in this fire uh, a crucible full of gold ingot. You spark that bad boy up and you get it hot. And what surfaces to the top is what they call dross. And what God's wanting to do with you, <laughs> there are elements in your personality that you think are you that are of the devil. And you don't know it. You've had them your whole life. Uh, just my temper. It's not of God. Just my mouth. I'm rebellious. It's not of God. The refiner's fire, yeah, it's hot, clearly by the term, the refiner's fire takes that gold and he superheats it to the point where it's malleable, where it can be worked by a craftsman. Reaches in with that ladle, pulls out that dross, gets rid of it. We don't ever look at that again. Problem is, the Bible says, as a dog returns to its vomit, so does a sinner return to its folly. So, you know, and I'm going to be gross with you. If I can talk about poop, I can talk about vomit. The thing about, I got dogs. The thing about, and my cat pukes all the time, which irritates me. It's Becky's cat. Don't blame her. Puke was once food. It once had the ability to sustain you. It no longer does. But we go back to it. What fed you once will never feed you again. Stop returning to the vomit in your life. You got out of that relationship, run. You got away from that bottle, go. You got away from that needle, hit it. And if the jerks around you won't, leave them in the dust. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Listen. It's not up to you. Brian and I get up here and talk early. We get up here and talk because we're just big mouths and that's just what we do. You don't have to do this to be effective. In fact, most people never do this. This is a position. This is a thing, man. But what you can do, I can never do. Amen. Do you get that? Yep. We are a body fitly joined together, but the people you know, the people you will talk to, will only be changed by the God in you. Now, I'm a salesman, man. I've been a salesman a long time. I was slinging coke and quaaludes back in the late 70s, early 80s. I could talk you into anything. I'm not joking. But I'm telling you, this is not a mental exercise. This is a Holy Spirit thing. Amen. Unless the Lord be lifted up. He says, if you lift me up, I will draw all men unto me. You want to see your, your life changed by the people around you changing? Lift Jesus up in every situation. Amen. Yeah, your car broke down. You're going to be a big jerk. You're going to whine. You're going to throw stuff. Sebastian was telling us the story of this cat at work, big old fella, got mad and threw a, a brake bleeder across the room and it exploded on a wall. 
I get it, man. We do stuff like that. But what if, just what if, the Holy Spirit would intervene and be like, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> you get paid the same, bro. Yep. Move on. But no. Flesh. Paul battled it. I get it. Paul battled the flesh. You'll battle the flesh, man. There'll be times when you want to... I, was getting, I had a gig Friday. gig Friday. And I was getting ready to go on stage, and I got a splinter under my fingernail. That sucked. Came out yesterday, somehow. Did you get it, man? Listen, listen, listen. I'm not going to belabor this. I'm not going to keep you on, on a mama's day. Holiness. Don't be afraid of these words. Sanctification, man. These are not... These are not weird Christianese words. These are things you got to get. I'm asking you to set yourself apart. Yes. I'm asking you to say, Father, I don't... And, and here's, here's another thing, guys. And we're going to finish the rest of that story here in a real quick second. But what... Even if you don't know, even if you're like, okay, well, you're tugging at my heartstrings a little bit. I mean, I feel, I feel some kind of way about what you're saying. But I... I uh, wow, you're scaring me to death. I had the opportunity to lead a... Uh, uh, and not that it matters, but I, I led a stripper to the, to the Lord some years ago, and I took her to church. And it really, it, it, it was funny because uh, I was at, at that time in a Baptist church, and it was about as white bread without the crust on it as you could get, I thought. Um, and, uh, but she, she gave her heart to the Lord, and she was looking for a, a church, and uh, she said, you guys, uh, she said, I like, your, I like your church, but it's just a little too much for me right now. Who am I to judge, man? Well, honey, I'll help you find another church. Just go get plugged in. You know, you're part of a body. This is, you're not a lone ranger. This is not a solo mission. But that's okay. So if you're feeling some kind of way about this, if, if it, this is all making you uncomfortable, like God's going to change you, I get it. Change is terrible, man. And like Brian was saying, if you come in here, uh, you know, a homosexual, and, and then somebody tries to tell you you have to leave a heterosexual, uh, the, mm -hmm, no, it ain't going to happen that quick. It ain't going to happen that way. It can, I guess. But if you come in here drunk today, you're going to leave a drunk today. And we've talked about this, man, I'm, not as a sidebar, and I'm not going to belabor this, but we've, we talked about this, Brian, Erzy, and I, about that I don't, I don't, we don't, we're, we're tired of giving sermons. With all our hearts, we want you to give you an experience with Jesus. The woman at the well had an experience with Jesus. It wasn't so much his words, it was his actions. We want you to get it that he is here for you. He is. We are too, but we're boneheads. We'll skip it. Some of us miss, you know, things we should be doing and everything else, but I mean... He'll never leave you or forsake you. He'll never let you go. He'll never ask more. You know, he said he'll never put on you more than he'll give you a way out. So if all this sanctification, holiness talk, scaring the crap out of you, that's okay. Just be honest with him. And, and some prayers like, Father, you know, that, that, whole, that whole sermon was kind of, you know, moving me a little bit, but I, I'm scared. I don't want to lose my personality. You know, usually... Um, it comes down to a security. The elephant, the baby elephant that they, they tie its leg to a log and it, it realizes that's as far as it goes. Once it becomes an adolescent, they unhook it from the log. It doesn't know it. It still stays chained. I don't want you chained up anymore, man. I want you free. I want you... I want you to allow God to burn the dross out. I want you to allow him to set you free, man, because there are people in your life that only you can reach. You can bring him to church, and, and we'll preach, of course, but you want to you see him change? Let him see a change in you. Not a perfection. That's not what I'm talking about. But when I, when I uh, 1987, my sister gave me this Bible. By the way, this, was, this Bible... Uh, I've talked about it many times. She gave me this uh, December 25th, 1987. She sanctified this. She prayed over this for me. I couldn't put it down for years. I, I couldn't stop reading it. Now it's hard for me to read. But 
Um, she, uh, she prayed that God would use that. And that's my prayer for each of you tonight or today is that God will use you, that he will put you in a place where you have to rely on him. <laughs> and again, man, I can just kind of feel people kind of backing up in their spirit like, oh my God, you're going to ask me to do something weird. No, man, he's not. You know what he's going to do? Most likely he's going to push you out of the way and, use, and, and do it for you. You feel me? He doesn't, he, he doesn't expect you to do anything but be submissive. The Holy Spirit wants to work through, through you. This, this water is cold and it's pretty refreshing. But the can, I don't, the can's no big deal. It, this could be, how many of you know this could be in a glass, it could be in a cup, it could be in one of those little triangular, you know, water things that you get, that you can't sit down. You know, you gotta hold, drink the thing real quick. It, it, it's not the vessel, it's what's in it. All right, we're going to finish the scripture. Um, let me get my band up. Get you out a little early maybe. Verse 20, And the Lord descended unto the top of Mount Sinai, called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses went up, verse 21, and the Lord said to him, go down and warn the people, do not force your way through to see me, or many of you will perish. Again, God not being a meanie, he is just, he knows what people can handle. Even the priests who approach, who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out against them. Exodus 15.1. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory and working wonders? Psalms 22, 3 says, You are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In you our ancestors put their trust. They trusted you and you delivered them. To you they cried out and, you were sa and they were saved. In you they trust, and they were not put to shame. So let's put a ribbon around this, man. There's no, there's no three points to write down. There's just an, an admonishment to follow the scriptures and be ye holy, for I am holy. Holiness is just setting yourself apart, guys. That's all it is, is you offering to God what is already his if you're born again. Where you say, listen, Lord, I don't know what it's going to mean, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to have faith that you're not going to ask me to do more than, than I can, and nor are you going to send me out to do something I can't through you. Those he appoints, he absolutely anoints. And the million cliches, but the reality is some of you have, I wish I could get some of you up here to speak and have you tell the story of what God's done for you. Your message will free people. Yeah. Do you understand that? Your message of how God has worked in your life will change people's lives. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to fall on your face. Here's the thing, man. Like, it's like the car you drive. Nobody knows it better than you do. And if you tell me about your car, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to disbelieve you. I mean, I don't know it. But if you put me in and show me, then I'll believe you. You show them that you're different. You allow them to see the Holy Spirit move through you. They'll change. They'll change. In, in, uh, the, old, in the New Testament, um, a lot of the, a lot of the widows, or a lot of the, the uh, married women were coming to know uh, Jesus and, and follow the, the way and their husbands weren't and uh, they were admonished to not divorce but to stay married and that these men would be changed by the witness of the woman so it is with you I challenge you reach out I challenge you to reach up I challenge you to reach in and allow the Holy Spirit to move through you I, I I, I, wanna, I want you to be a carrier. We've been talking about that garbage for two years. 
I want you to take off your spiritual mask and let that Holy Spirit breath breathe on people, man. I want you to infect them. I want you to do what we've all been asked, to speak. Just open your mouth, let them know that God loves them. And you don't know how it's all gonna work out, but you have faith that it is. All right, we're gonna uh, do what we always do each and every week. If you have not uh, confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are gonna do that. So if every head bow, every eye closed, I'm gonna lead you in a, I'm gonna lead you in a, in a brief uh, prayer. And I want you to repeat after me, and if, again, if this is the first time you've done it, the next step will be baptism, and that's coming up in that river out there. We'll just watch, wash all those sins away, man. But if you've never, or you want to rededicate your, your life, um, just uh, follow me in this prayer. Father God, I thank you that you are a holy God. And I thank you that you've made a way for me to be with you. I thank you for what Jesus has done on the cross. And I ask forgiveness of my sins. And I ask that you cleanse me through the blood of the Lamb. And Father, I will do my best to follow you and obey you all the days of my life. I love you. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, go with God, y'all. Listen, these guys rock it out one more time. Get them, guys. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you.